if expressions conditionally allow one expression versus another to be evaluated by OCaml. We can write an if expression with the keywords if, then, else. So this will be familiar from many other languages. Uh, for example, we could say if Batman is greater than Superman, then we could say yay, else, boo. So what's this going to evaluate to? Well, maybe you have some personal opinions of your own about that, but OCaml says this is going to evaluate to boo. And the reason for that is that strings in OCaml are ordered lexicographically, which is a fancy way of basically saying dictionary order. Okay, so Batman is not greater than Superman. This evaluated to boo. Uh, in fact, Batman would be less than Superman in dictionary order. Okay, so we have a couple interesting things going on here. We've got a part of the if expression that's called the guard that occurs between the if and the then keywords. That's got to be a bool, a boolean. It evaluates to either true or false. If the guard evaluates to true, the then branch is evaluated, but not the else branch. If the guard evaluates to false, then we skip the then branch and evaluate the else branch. And notice that those two branches, in this case, were both strings. Okay, so all of the things I said about types are actually very relevant here. We would not be able to compare, um, you know, just put, stick in maybe an integer here. If zero, then yay, else boo. Some languages let you do that. OCaml is going to be strict, though, about type checking here. And it's going to require that guard to have type bool. You can't treat an int as a bool. Uh, another requirement here in terms of fairly strict type checking is that both the then and the else branches have to have expressions that are the same type. So I couldn't say if true, then yay, else one, because yay and one have different types. And so I get an error message. This expression has type int, but an expression was expected of type string. Uh, the string expectation was set up just because OCaml happened to look at the then branch first there. And so it thought, hey, I'm going to get a string in both branches. OK, you could also, if you wanted, Try to leave out the else branch, but you're going to get a rather confusing error message at this point. This expression has type string, but an expression was expected of type unit because it is in the result of a conditional with no else branch. For now, for the most part, I just want you to avoid ever leaving out the else branch. We will see later on why it can be useful and in fact might be a desirable thing to do, Right now, we don't desire to do it. You'll see here that if expressions are a lot like the ternary operator that can be found in many languages. The ternary operator, usually written with a, you know, a question mark and a colon, you'll find in, say, Java, languages in the C family, and so forth. And that ternary operator is usually used to evaluate a guard and then continue by evaluating one of two expressions. That's what the OCaml if expression is doing with the syntax if, then, else. Now that we've taken a look at if expressions at a more intuitive level, let's go back and pick apart their syntax and semantics a little more carefully. The syntax of an if expression, as we've learned, is if, then, else. And it has three sub-expressions as part of it, which I've written as e1, e2, and e3, the e to indicate that they are expressions themselves, and the 1, 2, and 3 just to help us disambiguate as we read it. Next, let's state the evaluation rules, or the dynamic semantics. The definition of how to evaluate an if expression in OCaml is, if e1 evaluates to true, and if E2 evaluates to a value V, then the entire if expression, if E1, then E2, else E3, evaluates to V. But that's not all that there is to the evaluation rules. Actually, there are two evaluation rules for the if expression. The second rule is well, the complement of the first. If E1 evaluates to false, and if E3 evaluates to V, then 
if e1, then e2, else e3, the whole if expression, evaluates to v. So it takes two evaluation rules to express the meaning of if expressions. As for type checking of if expressions, if e1 has type bool, and e2 has type t, and e3 has that same type t, then the entire if expression has type t. It will get a bit verbose if we have to keep writing out these evaluation rules and type checking rules in the way that we are doing right now. It would serve us well to introduce a little notation to shorten them. Just a little bit of mathematical notation. For evaluates to, we're going to write a double right arrow and pronounce it as evaluates to. And for type checking, instead of has type, we're going to write colon and still pronounce it has type. With those two pieces of notation, I can simplify the rules that I've written here. Still mean the same thing, just a little bit quicker to write them and hopefully to read them once you get used to the notation. If you're finding a little bit difficult to parse that notation, let me put some parentheses in here for you. So I'll flip back and forth. Here is it without parentheses. Here it is with parentheses. When I'm writing that evaluation or type checking relation there, I'm really sort of letting it extend as far to the left as possible. So it's the entire if expression evaluates to V, the entire if expression has type T. 